this lady down here, this is the earth goddess. This is her in her full blossom. Now she is a mature woman, and again, she is a fertility goddess. That's why on May Day you have this fertility ritual. Now, this one seems so harmless. This last one we're going to be covering. What can possibly be so wrong about being Irish for a day? St. Patrick's Day, correct? What could possibly be so wrong about it? What could be so against our Christianity that we shouldn't have a thing to do with it? Well, first of all, if you know anything about the myths, the leprechaun was a demonic imp. He was an elf. Now, I hunted high and low for the best drawing of an elf I could come up with. And I think the one I found is absolutely adorable. <laughs> Isn't he a cute little fella? I mean, he looks like a Keebler elf. Yeah. You know? But he is green for a reason because he's an earth creature. This is why you see all the green in St. Patrick's Day. It represents nature. This is a nature-oriented occult ceremony with the holidays that go with it. He is always seen with a cauldron filled with gold coins, correct? I'm going to tell you something that just may really upset some of you. Back during the days of Babylon and the Egyptian Empire, the people were worshiping, and you'll find this in the Bible, a particular pagan god known as Moloch. Moloch was usually depicted as a giant bronze um, demonic statue with two horns, and he would have his hands outstretched over a fire pit. Parents, in order to receive financial blessings from Moloch, would take their own infants and place them on those white, hot hands. And if the children were old enough to walk, they would take the child and throw him into the fire pit. All this because they wanted to receive a financial blessing from their god known as Moloch. It's for this reason that why this demonic creature has that pot of gold. And I'm going to tie this in with these two items. Down here, how many people are familiar with this particular item here? It's known as a shillelagh, right? Think about this. Remember how I told you everything, occultically speaking, you can find as far as a reversal or a counterfeit from the Holy Scriptures? What could that shillelagh be a counterfeit of? What was that? Aaron's rod, exactly. Aaron's rod held great power in it. The shillelagh is where the leprechaun's entire power is held. It is stated, if you have his shillelagh, you control the leprechaun. Remember the design of the Tower of Babylon, how it spiraled? And remember how at the top I told you that there was the temples running through it? Moloch would bless the people through finances, right? It's from this you get the common symbol that's known as the Italian horn. The Italian horn itself spirals like the Tower of Babylon, and you ask anyone who wears it, they say, I wear it for financial blessings and for good luck. Isn't that what you've heard about it? That's where you get it from. It came first from the shillelagh. The shillelagh was a counterfeit of the rod of Aaron, and they took that symbol and made it after the fashion of the Tower of Babylon. This is how it all came into being. We like to boast to people that we are a Christian people. We are God's children. And yet, when we are honest with ourselves, our practices, as far as any of these holidays, will say the opposite. Those in the occult 
those who worship Lucifer or Satan, whatever you want to call him, whatever occult religion these people are involved in, they're the ones who created all these occult holidays. They continue to this very day. Let's face it. We have Christmas, we have Easter, we have Halloween, we have May Day, St. Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, so on and so forth. We really have to make up our minds, folks. Hosea once again said, my people are dying for a lack of knowledge. Well, the thing is, you've got the knowledge now. The question is, what are you going to do with it? We want to say that we're committed Christians, but are we committed to God or should we just be committed? <laughs> These are not going to be easy things to tackle. Then again, let's be honest, God never promised you an easy life. He said he would give you the strength to make it one day after another. Are you going to keep practicing these holidays? I'm going to hope you don't. I can't tell you not to, because if I just tell you right now, you can't do this anymore, I would be stepping on your free will. God gave each and every single one of you free will, the ability to choose. For me to force you into not doing it, would be doing something God himself wouldn't do. If you ever notice, God won't step on anyone's free will. If he, if he wanted people without free will, well, these couldn't be people who could love him. They would just be robots, wouldn't they? But God gave us free will so that, among other things, we could freely choose to love him. But again, as we're saying, all this is going to have to come down to your choice. Are you going to continue to practice these occult holidays? Because that's what they are. You can ask anyone in the occult. Go to, a, go to an occult bookstore or find a witch or, or even a Satanist. And after you witness to them, ask them about them. They'll tell you. Some of you may be able to just stop it just like that. God be praised if you could. Some of you may have to try to do this slowly. Because let's face it, a lot of this has very deep roots into our lives and into our traditions. Scripture tells us in Romans 14, we're not supposed to be putting one day above another. It's never supposed to be like that. And do you know that birthdays were actually started in the occult before any of you had them? In the occult realm, the birthday of an individual is considered the highest day for their life because their god, Lucifer, gave them life. Even though we know that isn't true, but try to explain this to them. But this is actually how birthdays came about. It's important to remember, not one day is supposed to be put above another. Do you know that when Christ was teaching on the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments, nine of them he told us we should observe. One of them he said, you don't have to worry about. Does anyone know what that one was by any chance? Sabbath. The Sabbath, exactly. You're never supposed to worry about the Sabbath day again. And the reason is, Christ said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. You're supposed to be worshiping me every day of your life. It is not a go to church on Friday or Saturday or Sunday and get your fix. This is seven days a week, love Christ. Not one day is supposed to be put above another. Not one day is just supposed to be set aside where you say, okay, I'm going to love Christ today, do his things, as he said, and then for the next six days, um, live like I'm back in the world again. These are tough things, people. They're very popular. 
And I honestly wish I could just get every single one of you to just do something about it. But I can't. I don't have the authority. And even if I did, I still couldn't because I'd be stepping on your free will. But you've got to take all this information, go to your dear Heavenly Father, and you pray like you've never prayed about it before. Because I'll tell you right now, when I was in the Illuminati, I not only learned this, but I learned more things than what you can imagine to where I can tell you right now, the New World Order is coming down the pipeline quicker than even what you've been told. And unless you're prepared as true Christians who's willing to stand up and be counted, I'm going to promise you right here and now, you're going to be bowled over and there's nothing you can do about it. Remember, an educated person can't be taken over because they see it coming and they know what they're, what they're doing. However, an ignorant person doesn't see, see it coming and he won't know what hits him until it's too late. The choice is up to you. Are you going to worship God all out, 100%? Are you only going to worship him part of the way and become and stay as maybe a Laodicean Christian? Are some of you just happy in your Christian comfort zones? Because let's face it, those Chris Christian comfort zones people, hey, they keep us from getting involved, don't they? They keep us from getting our fingers dirty, our knees from getting scraped. It's a wonderful thing to have. But I don't remember one of the apostles having them. I don't remember one of the regular disciples having them. Think about what you've been told tonight. I'm honestly praying it not only convicts you, but it causes you to truly dedicate yourselves to a 100% sold out mindset to where this is how you're going to serve Christ for the rest of your life. I'm going to turn over to Sand, and truly people, I do ask God blesses you and that you do make a wise decision. Doc, we appreciate you sharing that with us, and Lord, we appreciate you sending Doc here. Now, let me get on to something that is really the action step. We've heard all of this information. Now, what do we do about it? Well, now just think for a minute. How many of us have been involved with the things we just heard about tonight? How many of us have picked up Easter eggs? How many of us have uh, decorated Christmas trees? How many of us have gone and rang a doorbell and said trick or treat? Well, a whole lot of us have. As a matter of fact, let's see the hands. We better all put our hands up in America, right? Well, what I'm going to do, included in the prayer that we're going to pray here in just a minute, and we're going to ask God to forgive us for what we have done. Uh, in getting involved with a cult, even though we didn't understand what it was, we didn't even know it was wrong. But nevertheless, it was wrong. Amen? Wrong's wrong. Whether we knew it or not, we're still held accountable, uh, especially now that we do know, Right? And that brings us to another question. Uh, we know some trouble is coming. And so how do we get really prepared? How do we get our name in the book of life? How do we get cleaned up so that God is going to speak to us, going to guide us, going to protect us as these hard times come? You know, you can talk to someone that's not even a Christian, and you just ask them one simple question. Do you think America's going up or going down in strength? And they almost all say going down. Do you think that we're uh, building up or falling apart? They say falling apart. They know it. Everyone can see it. So how do we prepare for these hard times ahead? There's two questions we have to answer. First question is, how do we wash all of the sins off of our heart, including some of these occulting things we've just heard about that we have participated in? And folks, tonight, everybody needs to repent of some of these. The next thing is, how do we get our name written in the book of life so when we do die, we get to go to heaven? Well, they can both be summed up by this. First thing we have to realize is that we have sinned. Now, after a talk like this tonight, we know we have. 